Alrighty folks, welcome back. It's a pretty nice day here. Saturday, uh, Remembrance Day, October, November 11th. Whew. So, I drove this over here, took the mulcher off the machine, took the tamper off the ram, put the bucket on, chained it back down, and now I'm getting ready to head back to the cottage. So Brady and Riley just got back from New Brunswick with this machine yesterday uh, and the trailer. Brady took the 550 home. So we've got the Ram here. Let's see how this goes because look. Yeah, and it seems like it's emissions related. Surprise, surprise. 1044. All right, I should have enough time to get back there and get that dropped off Whew. before moment of silence. So getting ready to pull out of here. Tow haul on, exhaust brake on, brakes set on the trailer. And we're ready to roll. get this machine dropped off and then get back Whew. delivered unloaded 10 minutes where's the beauty of a goose man there's a single cab truck Turn wherever you want all right guys so that video started was yesterday saturday it's now sunday we're here in the woods didn't get much done yesterday got the road graded a bit in a few spots but ashley had some stuff she had to do yesterday and her parents were here so i was uh with bauer for a bit of the day but he was with me getting the excavator uh grading the road sorry but now I'm going to start cutting some some trees down in here. Just going to pick some stuff alongside the road right now. Stuff that's like really close to the road. We don't know yet if we're doing power back here or solar. That's going to be in a separate video. Get your guys' input and your experience on solar and the advantages and all that sort of stuff. But for now, just going to start taking some trees down. Regardless if we do power poles or not. A lot of these trees are just so close to the road. The road stays really wet. No sunlight gets in here really at all. This whole area needs to be like thinned out. Not clear cut by any means. I know people think, oh, you're going to cut all the trees down. No, but 
there is no young trees in here that are ever going to survive because they just do not get any sun only the big tall old ones are getting the sun proper forestry management you have to come through and thin out the forest at some point or you're just going to end up with a whole bunch of downfalls which is what you see through here and then that is a lot higher chance of having a forest fire come through when you have so much dead fuel on the floor of the forest so at some point i am going to have to come through here and thin thin this out up top is really bad there's a ton of deadfalls up there and it's just going to waste so most of it is spruce to be honest and most of it's just going to waste because it's it's up on the hill it's too far in um it falls down and it rots and you get nothing out of it so why not go through properly thin it out um you know get some money out of it some firewood out of it um buy a, a sawmill potentially get some boards out of it all that sort of stuff but for now today i'm just going to pick some stuff along the road that's easy to get at um we'll start taking some down so i'm going to take some hemlock and some spruce down but right now i'm just going to be start off with these two spruce actually one spruce and one hemlock right in front of each other that kind of stick out like a sore thumb here so those are the first ones that are that are going to come down and then probably work my way back to the cottage a little bit Bowers having a nap right now so uh when he wakes up he'll want to be seeing what's going on that's for sure all right so that's all i'm going to cut out on the road for today i think ashley's got one tree back by the cottage she wants she wants cut it's starting to get uh starting to get later in the day now i got quite a bit cut through here i know now the sun's going down so it's hard to tell but just cutting those i don't know 50, 10 12 trees along the sides of the road here brought a lot of daylight in through here this section right here you can tell is way brighter um yeah this will help the road dry out and everything else but getting some logs out of it cutting back you know like six six feet a couple meters on each side of the road just will help this dry out big time the other thing is need to consider if we are putting poles in they've already come in and put the done the scope so there'd be a pole here and that would mean that you know all the trees in between pole to pole will have to be cut so going down this one goes straight down to the next one so that whole corner there would have to come off to put the pole in and then the other pole is so that one's there the other pole is up in the corner behind the truck so again this corner here would have to come off to bring the poles in so if we do do power that way it's definitely not underground i know a lot of people are messaging saying why not run underground it's just not feasible whatsoever it's such a long run you would have to have some huge like bumper stations and the cable you would have to use would be crazy it's it's just not happening it's no way in the world that it's happening not even to bring it in so far underground and then do poles or bring in poles in so far underground it's just not happening so if we do power it's going to be poles and there's going to be a lot of a lot of trees to to take down along the shoulder of the road the first half of the road's not too bad, but the second half is all massive hemlocks and spruce and everything else. So we will get some logs out of just necessity, but yeah, anyway, it's hard to say. Wow, would you look at this absolutely beautiful morning. Frost on the ground, beautiful. This is my favorite time of the year by far. All right, well, got the 350 warming up. I'm gonna go to the pit, drop this truck off. So Riley has this to grab the chipper with. I'm gonna grab the, the ram and head back here. Start doing some cutting. Hopefully get a load of logs today. Maybe even get them hauled to the mill. Oh, the old girl looks cold. On that side. 
I don't think I've driven this truck since Thursday. See how it feels compared to the Ford. somewhere together uh, last week we did the bower had some hockey stuff in Lunenburg and we took it and I mean that was all on road stuff and she did not enjoy it it's just so stiff I don't know if the I know the new ones seem to drive a bit better because that tradesman that I took for a test drive that time that drove pretty nice um, but this is this is rough like really rough <laughs> I'll get the Kubota fired up here in a second had a tooth pop out yesterday so I gotta get pop a tooth back in but I gotta get the saws geared up first and then we'll uh, get some action here <laughs> Yeah, so there's a good size one. That will let some sun in. Whew, the big one. Big old hemlock. It definitely would be nice to have a bigger saw for cutting this stuff with. That's for sure. Got an 18 inch bar on it right now. And then we'll You can see, good sized tree right there. A bigger bar would make things much nicer. Man, there's so many limbs on hemlock, it's unbelievable. Whew. That's a lot of cleanup right there. A lot. Well, getting a pretty good pile of hemlock right here in this section load of logs there there's a few more down that way and of course out where Riley is Riley out there with the chipper and the 350 cleaning stuff up as we go but yeah this is widening it out letting some more sun in this is what it needs to begin with but also uh, where did that marker go must just drop the tree on it oh no there it is so there's a the pole that's where a pole would be and then the other pole is straight ahead of that little birch is. I don't know if you guys can even see that. But that's where the next pole would be. So probably a couple of those maple along there and that hemlock. And then uh, back there, the other side, probably about 30 feet, 40 feet 
beyond the chipper on this side is where another pole is. So there's two maples there and a, a maple and a birch and a hemlock. That would have to come out. So I mean, you know, a day, day and a half of cutting and cleaning and getting logs out of it and it's being prepped in case we do decide to go with the poles. So I don't know. I don't know what to do when it comes to the power situation. Help me out. <laughs> what are you doing, bud? You getting ready for bubbles? Yeah. Okay. You love me. I do love you. <laughs> All right, well, it's the end of another beautiful day back here. We actually weren't planning on staying back here tonight, really. Silly. But here we are working working late in the day and it just makes more sense to stay back here tonight so that's what we're doing so uh yeah we got some more work done obviously tons more to do we actually really enjoy being back here in the fall and the winter the wood stove and um you know just everything about it but it's we really enjoy being back here in the winter it's nice to keep an eye on the place because there's no heat in it regardless if we're not here as of right now you know we don't have power source so stay tuned for another video coming up soon because i am going to ask you guys you know your input anyone who has experience with situations like this with off-grid and versus on-grid power i mean the, the benefits are obvious for each one but um we haven't decided yet what we're what we're gonna do but that's gonna do it for this one just a little update on what's going on back here people have been asking for an update uh for a while now we haven't had a whole lot of footage from back here we haven't been back here that much recently but we'll probably be staying back here more now okay i gotta say goodbye to everybody Alright guys, so uh, until next time, take care, stay safe, we'll see you then, bye.